Hi everyone. Oh, lovely long time. 13. This could be lucky for some or unlucky for some. Today, I'm in luxury. I'm in Beaver Hall, the room, the homestay room. Put the aircon on. It's so hot out there. Can't get near my hammock with all the noises. Where do we leave it? Lovely long time 13. Gary is just gone downstairs. He wants to go and get food for the evening. He's hungry. After a hectic day with Posh, the Posh woman, let's call her Posh. He's gone downstairs to her door, she said, drop down. And he's knocked on the door. She's come to the door with her dressing gown on, open, nothing underneath. She's grabbed his hand and pulled him in. Oh dear. Then, you can imagine what's happened. Uh, an hour later, after she seduced him again, and she's hammered. She's absolutely, she's drunk. She's hammered. She passes out. And by this time, it's about half eight in the evening. Gary is starving, and he thinks, oh, I'm just going, I need food. And he gets up. She's out cold. Gets dressed. Out the door. Closes the door, locks the door behind him. Down the lift, off he goes out. Wanders around, finds food, eats. Comes back, goes home, up to his penthouse, duplex condo, and crashes out, goes to bed. Something like five o'clock in the morning, he's getting a buzzer. You can hear this buzzer and it wakes him up. And it's constant, this buzzer. And he's got a phone system next to his bed with a monitor on it. And he looks at it and it's posh. Um, and the monitor only shows just the person's head, basically. She's so close to the camera, must be. And he's like, oh, what time? And he's looking at the side of the display and there's the time. It's something like 4.30 in the morning. And he thinks, oh, no, now what? Anyway, he drags himself out of bed. He's got a pair of boxes on. Presses a button to open the door. And uh, as he's walking out the bedroom into his main area, lounge area, she's come through the door. And she starts shouting at him and giving him abuse. Why he had left her. Um, and she was still drunk. And she just went off on him. And gave him a right mouthful. And he's like, whoa, what the? You know, you're drunk. I was hungry. I went to get food. Where's the problem? And she's like, oh. And she's just angry because he left her. Uh, in other words, she wanted to wake up next to him and seduce him again. And he's just like, it's half four in the morning. Go away. Leave me alone. I'm tired. And he, he actually grabbed her shoulder, turned around and pushed her towards the door. She was not a happy woman, not a happy bunny at all. And she, and he's like, go out and pushed her out the door, closed the door. Luckily, she didn't turn around and start hitting the buzz again. She went and he's gone back to bed and thinking, oh my. Nine-ish, 9.30, he wakes up naturally and he's like, Oh dear, what happened? And he thinks, oh, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to have breakfast. And he gets up and he just makes himself some toast and gets some orange juice and he goes up and sits on his deck and thinks about the last couple of days. Remember, Gary's there to try and find a wife, a partner, surrogate mother. He wants children, offspring, wants siblings for his business. For the future and the last few days you know he's that a that's gone out the window that girl posh now is she's just crazy how's he going to get her? he doesn't want this he doesn't want to be involved with a woman that okay she's a superstar but she just it's obvious she's a heavy drinker or when she's not working 
she's going to become a liability very quickly. And that's not what he wants. He doesn't want his children having a mother like that. <laughs> so he's already planning, I've got to get rid of her. He's there half an hour, maybe he's coming up at 10 o'clock again. The buzzer's going. There's a buzzer button. He's like, ah, who's this? And he, there's another, next to, on the top deck, there's another screen on the wall. It's her again. It's posh. And he's like, oh, yes, what's the problem? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me in. And he's like, oh, presses the button, lets her in. And she comes up and she's, she's dressed in like joggers and a t-shirt. And she's all apologetic and says that, sorry, she got drunk and seduced him and then came and shouted at him. She said she's just, in that moment in her life, for the last couple of weeks, she's a bit sad and depressed. She doesn't normally drink a lot and, and just apologizing. And he's like, yeah, he said, I, you know, I'm a bit low and we sort of fell into each other. And he said, but, I'm not after this sort of relationship. And he's straight to the point. I'm not after this sort of relationship. He said it was, uh, it's been great fun, but I'd rather we stay friends. Um, and, um, maybe we just go out for meals together or occasional drink, but no more. You know, I'm looking for something different. And it sort of took her back a bit because she's a superstar. She normally probably got guys following her down the road and, you know, chasing her, stalking her. So it, it sort of hit home a bit. And she's sort of, oh, okay. And it took her back. And she's like, right, yeah, okay. That's fine. And she's like, okay, we can do that. We can just be friends and go for a meal. She says, great. Well, give me a buzz when you want to go out for a meal. She said, I'll see you later. And she did a U-turn and out the door. How lucky was he? Because she could have gone and become what they call a bunny boiler, <laughs> whatever it's called. She could have been absolutely a psycho. He got off there very lightly. I think it's because she's so posh and famous that she doesn't get knockbacks. So, uh, but that could always come back and bite him in the backside because she might like that being knocked back and suddenly fall madly in love with him and become a stalker for him. Could that happen? Does it happen? Will it happen? <clears throat> it's, uh, I don't know, somewhere between 10 and 11, and he's like, I've got to get back to, I need to speak to B. I need uh, to clarify my head, see how everything's going, and tell her what's happened. <laughs> she wanted to meet the superstar. Mm. Anyway, he jumps on the phone and rings B. B, let's have a meeting. B's like, okay. I'm at the, uh, my condo, come to the office, we call it the office now. Um, or do you want to meet uh, for lunch? And he said, lunch sounds great. He said, so about an hour, meet at whatever restaurant. He said, great. I'll, she said, I'll come and pick you up. You've got no car. He said, okay, brilliant. So I'll pick you up in an hour and a bit. She came down, picked him up, restaurant, and he told her all about posh. And B was a bit sad that she's not really going to find out who it is. She said, no problem, I'll find out of Angela who it is. And uh, how did it happen? Why did you let it happen? And he's, I don't know. He said, it was just, I was, oh, he said, it was like a James Bond moment. He said, it just happened. And he's saying, I'm really getting fed up with these going, trying to date women and find women um, to be my wife. He said, it's just a headache. He said, this every corner, there's a woman who works in a shop who I can fall for, a woman in a restaurant, everywhere I go, he said, there's beautiful women everywhere. But it's so hard, it's such hard work getting to know them and not jumping into bed with them because they're all so beautiful. And she's sort of, hmm. And B's in her head, you know, she's like, okay, now he's coming back round to thinking about the surrogate kids. Maybe this is the time to pounce on him again. So she does. She says, well, 
my offer stands. She said, the business is fine. Um, we, if you want to invest more money in other things, we can easily do it. She said, you don't necessarily want to take me and my child on, but I can give you one, two, whatever children you want. You'll be able to take me and my child across to the States at some point um, so we can see your life. I can help you with the children if you want. We can make this the perfect business partnership, um, maybe with fringe benefits for me or you. She said, we can make this work. We get on so well. And there's no hidden agendas. It just makes sense. And for me, it's about the money, but also a chance to help my uh, child and also maybe see a bit of your life in the States. And you're giving me a future with the job and the business and everything. You've changed our lives. So we can help you change yours. She said, it just makes sense. It fits. Why not do it? It's only about money. And you have so much you don't care. And he sort of sits back a bit. He's like, huh. He said, yeah. He said, well, it is beginning to make more sense. He said, but I'm still hungover. He said, I, I'm not going to say anything today. He said, you have to think about it more. But it is beginning to make more sense than it did before. And B's like, ka -ching, that is working. He's falling for the idea. Now I've just got to keep him away from other women. So, clever B, why don't we go out tonight for a meal um, and get Angela to join us and we talk business. And we look at, find out what other businesses are coming up, maybe other condos or houses. You know, she's in the know. Why don't we do a business meeting? And Gary says, no. He said, not tonight. He said, I'm, I'm hungover now. He said, let's do it tomorrow night. Arrange it for tomorrow night. Be like, ah, that posh woman could sneak in again tonight. And she's like, do you want to spend tonight alone? And he's like, yeah. Okay, sure. Your new posh girlfriend not going to come round? He said, no, no. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no. But he's giving me hell now. <laughs> so there you go. They agree. Next night, business meeting about investments. She's planted the seed again about children. The guy's earning so much money, it's ridiculous. He likes Thailand, he likes the idea of having children from the Asian, from an Asian woman. And it's probably going to cost the same as if he did it from a woman anywhere else in the world. So what's the difference? He does want an intellectual mother for the children. Anyway, they have lunch. Off they go. He said, right, drop me home. He said, I'll see you tomorrow night. He said, tomorrow I'm just going to chill. I'm not going to do anything. And she says, okay, brilliant. Have a nice evening. Drops him off. And just as she dropped him off, the garage doors open and the white Mercedes is starting to come out. And he's got out of B's car and B, he says, oh, that's the posh woman. So B leaps out of their car, comes around the other side, and the posh woman came up the ramp, stopped, put the window down, and Gary is, uh, how are you? He said, this is B, my personal assistant, business associate, and posh woman put her arm out, and Adam shook her hand, and they wide each other. And that was it. And Gary said, I think we're nice. And she goes, yes. Put the window up and drove off. Gary's like, okay. And B went, that's so and so and so and so. And she did this and this. And he said, oh, whatever. So I'm going. See you tomorrow. And B's all starstruck. 
gets back in the car and he goes up. Um, and this is, you know, the afternoon, this is about four o'clock maybe. I've had lunch and gone back three o'clock, four o'clock. He's chilling out, he's having a bit of a swim. Six o'clock, he's got a beer, totally relaxed, hangover's gone. And he's thinking, oh, what a day, what a week. Buzzer starts going and he's like, the only person that rings my buzzer now is Posh. And uh, he's thinking, it's not me, it's Posh, it's got to be, oh no. Anyway, he walks across to the wall and it's not, it's a, it's a guy. And he's like, yes, and the guy speaks English. The guy says, I've got all your food for you, sir. For your party. I think you've got the wrong place, he said. I haven't ordered any. And uh, he said, oh, it's the lady um, with the Mer He said a name and then said, she's got a Mercedes. And he's like, oh, God, oh, no, what now? And he says, okay. So he comes down the steps, opens the door. And the guy, and there's two other guys behind him. In they come with loads and loads of food and plates and all sorts of stuff. And he's like, oh, just dump it there. He said, do I owe you money? He said, no, it's all paid for by the lady. Huh. Off they go. And he closes the door and, he, and there is loads of bags and bags and bags of food. Let's leave it there. Let you imagine what's going to happen next. Ah, why would she go and buy him a load of food? She said in the car that she, she was like going off. And now she's bought a load of food. He told her that they made me do dinner and stuff together. And he like told her where to go, basically. He's worried now. He's worried. You know, he's just taking delivery of all this food. What he should have done now, he's thinking, is told him to over off with your food. I don't want it. So the food's arrived. Where's the main event? What is the main event going to be? And he can just picture P in his head. Oh, dear. Ah, lucky for Sam, or unlucky. Love me long time, 13. <laughs> See you soon, guys. Bye.